Hello again, and in this video we're going to be setting up a patrol script for our agent and then also adding some animations to make it look more like an enemy. And uh, this is getting a little bit of head into what our next topic is, is going to be, which is animation. Uh, but I've got some pre-built animations that you can download um, from the course module here, or you can get your own animations from Mixamo. I got these from Mixamo a few years ago. And um, if I jump into these, I think these are just materials. Where are the FBXs for him? Here they are here. And um, if I jump into animation uh, and hit the play button, you can see the idle animation and so forth. Okay, so um, I grabbed the idle um, and attack. And I think that's all we have um, for this particular character. Is a, uh, oh, yeah, that's melee and an idle. There's also a different idle I have in here too. And there should be a walk. Oh, there's the walking animation here. And we're going to discuss how to set up these animations um, a bit more in depth, but I figure we can look at how we can apply them to this enemy here because you can you can do a whole lot without actually knowing all the ins and outs of the 3D animations. All right, so the first thing we're going to need is a set of waypoints. So uh, to create a waypoint, um, what I'm going to do, I'm going to collapse some of the stuff in my hierarchy here. Uh, I'm going to hit the plus button and I'm going to create a empty game object and I'll call this game object waypoint. And what we're going to do is we're going to make this a label and what these labels are are stuff that's only visible within the scene view as a gizmo. And you can see there's a couple of different selection icons here you can use. I'm going to use a yellow one for this. And uh, if I move this waypoint game object up, you can see that it shows up there and it's got a little label inside of our scene. So I'm going to go up into the top view here and shut off perspective. And I'm going to put a couple of these waypoints around in our scene. So I'll take this one and put it in this corner. I'll duplicate it. Move one down here. Duplicate it. One over here, duplicate it, and one over here as well. So we have four different waypoints. And if I tumble around in our scene a bit, I can grab these waypoints. And then move them down so that they're closer to the ground plane. And um, head back into perspective here. You can see this one here. And uh, you can also manage your gizmos from this menu here. So it toggles the visibility of all gizmos. So if you want it to be bigger, uh, you can make it bigger. So if we can see this here. I'm going to pan a bit to the side. Select one of these ones that are up front. And uh, oh, I had Gizmo shut off, so you can see they're really large now. So you can see them from wherever now. It says one, two, three, and four. I didn't realize I had the button shut off. There we go. Um, but you can reduce the size if that's too large for you, increase it, and so forth. Okay. All right. So that's how you can create a basic waypoint icon. You can also use like actual geometry in there or primitive objects and then hide them when the game starts. But I just figured I'd show you that there's an option for that um, if you're creating some sort of a system. All right. So uh, we're going to have it so that this guy can patrol between all of the different waypoints. So we're going to need a script for that. Um, I'm going to go down to the scripts folder, create a new script, and call it patrol script. We'll open 
this up. Visual Studio. And there's a couple of things that we're going to need here. Um, so this is going to replace our current basic nav mesh agent that we have. So we're going to need to bring in the namespace for um, Unity Engine AI. So And um, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to grab our nav mesh agent. So we'll say nav mesh agent, and we'll call him agent just like we did last time. Um, we're also going to need an array for the transform. So we're going to create a public uh, transform. And we're going to put a set of brackets here to create an array and call it waypoints. So there's our waypoints. We're also going to have a boolean to flip when we arrive. So we'll call it arrived. We'll also have another boolean for patrolling. Um, we're going to have an integer which is going to basically label our destinations that are created from our waypoints. Um, we're also going to have, um, actually we don't need this for now, I'm going to leave this out. I'm going to put in the animation stuff when we actually uh, need it. But we are going to need a, so I'll just put in needs animator. And uh, we're going to have a couple more variables here. We're going to have a public transform for i. And this i is going to basically be a raycast to tell whether or not the um, nav mesh agent can see the player. Because uh, we, don't, we don't want him to be following the player if he can't see him. Um, and we're also going to have one for our target, which is our player. So. We'll call it target, just like we did in our basic nav mesh agent script. And we'll also have a vector three for last position. And what last position will do is it will basically store um, the last thing that we were going to. That way, if our enemy loses sight, with the player, it'll go back to its last position. Um, and I'll, we'll also use it for in a couple other places here. Um, all right, so the next thing we're going to have to do is grab the nav mesh, the, the nav mesh agent. So I'm going to say agent, this will be in the start function. Agent is going to be equal to get component. Um, nav mesh agent. Let's scroll down a bit here. Um, I'm also going to um, set patrolling equal to true. And um, I'm also going to check for the last position and set it equal to transform dot position. Now we're going to be using a coroutine to be able to alternate uh, between our different um, our different waypoints uh, because what we're going to be doing is we're going to pause, we're going to have a pause every time that we reach one of these. So coroutine becomes really important for this. So right below the um, update function, what we'll do is create an ienumerator. ienumerator is the um, type of um, it's going to return uh, when uh, we call this coroutine. 
and we'll call this go to next patrol point. Go to next patrol point. And um, I think that's all we need for here for now. And in our start function, we will start um, that coroutine for go to next patrol point. And uh, we gotta put this in quotes here. All right, so that should do the job in setting up our coroutine. Now, what we want to do inside of the coroutine is alternate um, in between these um, different patrol points, right? So what we'll do here is we will check to make sure that the um, waypoints array has some sort of length. So we're gonna create a condition here and say if waypoints dot length um, equals zero then what we're going to do is yield break uh, which I think I spelled yield wrong there we go yield break so it's going to exit the coroutine um, if not, then what we'll do is we'll set patrolling equal to true. And um, we'll then wait a second. So we'll say yield. God, yeah. type today. Wait for seconds. Uh, I'm sorry. Yield return. new wait for seconds and uh, we'll tell it to wait for two so say 2.0f we'll then set arrived equal to false once it gets there and then we'll set its destination equal to um, waypoints uh, waypoints destination which is that number that we created for the index and then that thing's position that thing in the array's position All right, so that'll set it to that waypoint's destination position. And then um, what'll happen is when we run out of waypoints, what we'll do is we'll say destination is equal to, and uh, we'll set it equal to destination plus one to increment it. And we'll use the modulus of the length to determine whether or not we need to return back to zero. Or turn back to the original um, destination in the waypoints. So I'm going to save this. Now, what we need to do is in our update function, um, basically start setting up whether or not we can cycle uh, through these different um, destinations. So uh, in the update function, we'll do this in the update function, we'll say if uh, agent dot path pending, What we'll 
do that means that he's on patrol and he's moving to a specific path so what we'll do is we'll just return out of the function um, then what we'll do is we'll say if patrolling if patrolling we'll check to see if the agent's destination is less than the agent dot stopping distance so we'll say if and I'll say agent dot remaining distance which is a built-in these are all built-in functions so um, it's able to tell how far it has to go to get to its destination and we'll say remaining distance is less than um, agent dot stopping distance Oops. stopping distance uh, what we'll do is we'll say if not arrived so if we haven't arrived yet arrival equal true and um, so that means that we so this is we've arrived at the destination so arrived at waypoint so we'll say agent dot destination is less than agent dot stopping distance and if they haven't arrived arrived will be true and then we'll start the coroutine again Let's put it in quotes. Let's put the wrong quote there. And that should get us to select the next patrol point. Else. Arrived will be false. Alright, so um, what should happen here is when we apply the scripts, so you should save this. If we apply the scripts, um, it should start to patrol to the different waypoints. So let's head back to Unity. And uh, we're back in Unity. We'll select our agent and we're going to drag our um, patrol script onto the agent. And we'll select the agent and we're going to remove the, or not remove, but I'm just going to shut off the basic nav mesh agent script. We don't need that to be running at the moment. And um, we should see the um, patrol script here. And uh, what we could do is set this to four and then take these waypoints and fill them in here. Right, so we have all the waypoints here and I th think we're good the only thing we might have to change is the stopping distance um, our stopping distance is 5 I'm going to change it back to um, I'm going to change it to 1 and then hit the play button and see how it goes so I'm going to move a little bit closer to my scene here he goes to the first waypoint, he should stop for two seconds and then start moving to the next waypoint. Goes to the next waypoint and so forth. Cool. So I think he's gonna go all the way around. I'm gonna let him go all the way around just to make sure that he gets all the way around and to then start the cycle all over again. Excuse me. Yep, and he 
continues back to the first waypoint. Great. All right, so it seems like everything's working as far as control, uh, patrolling goes. Now what we want to do is have it set up so that if the there is no obstacles between the um, player's uh, the enemy's vision and the player, then he will start to chase after us and eventually attack us. So what we're going to do here is set up um, some parameters so that he actually has some vision here. Now um, to start this off, what we will do is add the eye to the enemy. This will just be an empty game object uh, similar to the waypoints that we had here. So I'll select our agent and um, let's see, create empty. I'm going to drag and drop this onto our agent. I'll zero this out so that it's zeroed out on our agent. And I'll call this I. And I'll zoom in here on I. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move this up. And uh, once again, I'll, I'll give it a label. We got I there. Okay. So uh, what we'll do is in our agent, I believe we already have a variable inside of our patrol script for the I. We'll drag and drop the I into here. And I'll also drag and drop the player controller into here. Okay, so we'll, what we're going to do is we'll end up having a target now uh, where he starts to follow the player. So let's jump back to the script. And back in the script, um, what we should be able to do is start setting this up. So um, we're going to need some sort of function that returns whether or not we can see the, um, the player. So we'll create a bool and call it can see player right below the start function and in this function we'll create a raycast so um, I'm not sure if we yep. so we'll create a boolean here and call it can see and what we'll do is we'll set this equal to false And um, we'll then create a raycast. So we'll say ray, um, ray is equal to new, um, new ray. And this ray will start at the i dot position. And um, we'll then look for the player's position, which is target um, we got target up there, right? Target dot uh, transform dot position. And uh, we're going to then subtract. I dot position from that. So it should be the I position target dot transform dot position minus I position um, for the overall distance. Uh, we'll then create a ray cast hit and we'll call this hit. And then we'll test to see if we can see the player. So we'll say if physics dot raycast, um, and we'll set this to ray comma out hit. From here, we're going to check to see if it's equal to the target, and if it's not equal to the target, we'll start with not equal to the target. So we'll say if 
hit dot transform is not equal to target. Can see equals false. Else what we'll do is we'll say can see equals true. And we'll also set the last position value. And last position is going to equal target.transform.position. So this is going to be the last place he know, knew where the player was. So target.transform.position. So what's going to happen here is if our enemy is in the process of moving to where it saw the player and it loses the player from this ray cast, it'll continue to move towards that position. It'll, it'll be the last, it'll be like as if it's the last place you saw them and they're going to look for them. Okay. And then the last thing we'll do in this function is return the boolean. So we'll do return can see. All right. So now back in our update function, we can scroll down below our if patrolling. And this is where we're going to create our next state. And our next state is going to be whether or not they can see the player. So I'll say if can see player, um, we'll then set its destination to be the player, uh, shut off patrolling, and um, and then see if we're close enough to attack. So I'll say agent. Oops, I'm not inside the if condition here. So if we can see the player, right? Agent dot set destination. And we'll set the set destination to target dot transform dot position. And um, we'll set patrolling to false. And um, we'll then have an if else here. And in this if else, we'll check to see if we're close enough to attack. So we'll put in a check here. All right, so we check to see if we can attack. Um, we'll check to see if agent dot remaining distance is less than agent dot stopping distance and here would be attack true and then attack false we'll come back to this later when we implement our animations All right, so what should happen now is if we save this and head back into the editor, if we hit the play button, the enemy should go back to following the player. Okay. And the reason why my gizmos are showing up here is because I turned on gizmos in the game view. So now what we need to do is set up some obstacles so that our play, our enemy can't see our player. Um, so what we could do here 
is um, I'm going to create some new cubes. Um, yeah, I'm going to make this one bigger and taller. that and I'll put a couple of these around our scene so our player can hide behind them so I'll uh, duplicate this one put this one here I'll move the player back a bit I'll duplicate this one. Move it here. And then duplicate this one here. Now we want to make sure that um, these are baked into our navigation mesh. So we'll select the navigation mesh and go back to the navigation tab. Um, I'm going to select all these cube objects. Get to show off the gizmos for a second. I'll just select them all from here. And I need to change these all to navigation static. And then rebake the plane. And if I select the plane, turn the gizmos back on, you can see now we have some pathfinding that goes around these. So as our player, our enemy is patrolling around, um, he'll move around these object obstacles that are in the scene. So if I hit play now, I'm just going to wait here behind, and our enemy goes, and he goes to that first waypoint. Pretty cool. Now he goes to the second waypoint. And if I go out into an area where you can see me, you can see he starts to follow me now. And if I hide over here maybe, oh he sees me still. Ah! So what has to happen is he has to reach that final destination without seeing me and then he'll return back to patrol. Oh, you know what, I didn't start the co-routine again, so he's gonna just stop there and not go anywhere. So um, we get some extra, some more code that we need to write here. All right, so um, we have this set up. Uh, we now need to set um, our co-routine back up so that it, it um, starts to play again if he gets to that place where he thought he saw the player um, and then goes back onto patrol. So you can see that this if can see player is um, in an if statement. So what we'll do is we'll have an else condition that cannot see player and goes back on patrol. So there'll be an else here. And inside of this else, um, what we'll do is we'll set the um, set attack animation so when we come back we'll do that. And then what we'll do is we'll say if if not patrolling so if we're not patrolling agent dot set destination and we'll set destination to our last position
Um, once it gets to that last position, we'll say if. So we'll say if agent remaining distance is less than stopping distance, which would be at that last position that he saw the player. So we can actually copy this right from here. Paste it in here. And inside of here, what we'll do is we'll, um, we'll then say patrolling is true again. And then we'll start the coroutine back up. So start coroutine. And um, we're going to do the go to next patrol point. And remember that has to be in quotes. So we start back up the coroutine for the patrol. And that's pretty much it, I believe. So let's give this a shot, let's save it. And then the last thing would be setting up the animations. All right, so I'm in play mode. I'm gonna move to a spot where he can see me. So he starts chasing me. He's still following me. All right, so I'm going to try to hide somewhere really far. Hopefully, the last spot he saw me, somewhere over there. And now he's going back to patrol. It's going to be really stealthy here. Oh. Oh, he saw me. <laughs> Turd. <laughs> but anyway, it should be working um, properly at this point. Okay. So I'm going to save that here. Um, I'm, this video is getting kind of long. So in the next video, we'll set up the animations that we imported at the beginning of this lesson.